Hi everyone, I've just done some posts on Saturn and I just wanted to make um, a short video about where we're heading with Saturn and the outer planets. I call Saturn the gatekeeper because it stands at the edge of the inner planets, that is those that have a very short um, orbit around the Earth, relatively short anyway. Um, Saturn's orbit is 28, 29 years and it returns to the position it was in the skies when you were born every 29 years and you get then what's called the Saturn return. Now the reason I started with this is that Saturn um, brings up your shadow side, the stuff in your subconscious that you don't want to look at. And I think it's interesting when we're looking at the workings of the universe, the way it revolves, the way it comes back to ourselves, to look at Saturn because we can see its effect when we're around 28 or 29, which I mentioned in my post. Now if you actually have a look at yourself, there's um, Saturn which I see as the gateway to your um, unseen bits and pieces. So you've got your conscious life, you've got your subconscious life, uh, which is where Saturn has its effect. Then you actually go lower than that and you move into the collective, um, you might say whirlpool or eddies or subcurrents, whatever. Um, and these are where you pick up if effects of the community you live in, the society you interact with, um, the world in which we live at present. Because if you um, think about the society that you're brought up in, Americans have a different way of living to people in India and people in India have a different way to living in China. But the interesting thing is that if you take people out of their early um, birthplace, as has happened for example with the forced removal of Aboriginal kids in Australia, you will find that the symbols that are important to them are actually the symbols that arise from Aboriginal heritage. And you'll probably find the same thing with Native American people who were removed from their families, that the symbols that are important to them that will come up in their dreams are actually symbols of Native American heritage. So when we're born into um, Western society, whether it's here in Australia or Europe or America or wherever, um, you'll find that deep in the, in the collective consciousness, is the expression of symbols which have resonance with that society. So for example a cross will have a resonance for a Christian community. A different form of the cross may have res resonance for another community that expresses its Christianity uh, in a different way. So it's an interesting concept actually and the starting point is that Saturn is this gatekeeper um, the one that make, makes us look at ourselves and when you get to the age of 29 that's when you get upheaval in your life when you've got to look at actually settling down you know Saturn sets the goalposts for you um, and if you actually see the way that Saturn resonates at different parts of your life you can then begin to understand so when you start working with your, um, your sun, your moon, um, your ascendant, you can see how Saturn as a starter actually interacts with them and how you then interact with galactic influences. So that you're not here as this person completely isolated on Earth. You've actually got a, a soul song connection with your galactic song lines, you might say. Um, and that's the purpose of coming back um, full circle Firstly going to the outer planets and then we'll be coming back to link them up with what they bring up that is challenging in your life and in relation to the basic template of your soul print, if I can put it like that. So although I posted a bit about Saturn, um, just to give you some further information, I wanted to um, just read out to you something that Liz Green, who mixes astrology and psychology, has written about the effect that Saturn has in its, um, in its position in your life. So you have a look at your houses, um, have a look for Saturn, and as I've said in the post, it looks like a demented H. It's sort of an H and it comes in and then it's got a cross along the top. So what she says here, and I'm just going to read from the book, so bear with me if I look a little bit vacant while I'm doing it. Sorry about that. But anyway, 
She says here, at the risk of oversimplification, one might say that in Taurus, Saturn brings out the fear of losing what one possesses or of material failure, or of the instinctual nature and its integrity. In Gemini, he brings out the fear of becoming committed or of losing the freedom to explore the world of ideas. In Cancer, he brings out the fear of emotional isolation and rejection. In Leo, he brings out the fear of being mediocre and unnoticed and unloved. In Virgo, he fosters the fear of chaos and of the unknown. In Libra, he stimulates the fear of darkness and of the destructive power of intense emotional involvement. In Scorpio, he accentuates the fear of others' domination or control through emotional vulnerability. In Sagittarius, he aggravates the fear of meaninglessness and bondage to fixed routines. In Capricorn, he exacerbates the fear of control by the material environment and by the authority of others. In Aquarius, he emphasises the fear of being indifferent and of being excluded from the group. And in Pisces, he intensifies the fear of disassociation from a greater emotional hole and of emotional solitude. Now, for example, I have Saturn in the 11th house, <coughs> excuse me, which relates to groups and the collective. And I do have difficulty coping with groups. I'm always slightly suspicious of what's going to happen, of the interaction, the interpersonal relationships. And, um, and I'm quite ready to um, withdraw very quickly if I feel that I'm threatened in any way. I can remember in one group I was in, um, someone made a comment that really, really got up my nose. And I was um, very tempted just to get up and walk out in a monumental snit. But luckily, um, I sat there and, um, and kept going. And um, it was quite a good thing to do because things settled down in the group. And also, um, it led to me um, taking up the reins of the group when the person leading at that time disappeared and led me on to teaching. So it was a big lesson to me not to be quite so um, suspicious and so touchy when I'm working with groups. So if you like, you can have a look at where Saturn is in your chart. Now what you're actually looking at is the circle outside which will tell you which house is which, like Aquarius, Pisces, and then have a look for the Saturn symbol. And think to yourself, how does this work um, for me? Does it bring up anything in relation to fears in the way this house works in my life? And then what I'm going to do after this post is then move on to the outer planets. These are called the outer planets, Uranus, Pluto and um, Neptune, uh, because these have much longer um, orbits of the Sun. And also because they tend to affect the collective as well as the individual in their effects. Um, so it will also show you not just how you interact with these influences but also how at present they're interacting with the whole of humanity and what's happening here on the planet so that we're gradually drawing the threads together and, um, and we can see how we operate as part of the web of light rather than just as individuals to totally isolated from each other. So watch this space for more.